Working class bait, coal miners edition. Lunch is usually the best part of the day at work and it was no different for the coal miners in their marrows down the pit 500 metres below the surface. In the mines there wasn't a specific time where tea breaks were taken. In the shipyards and other industrial industries, a siren would be called for everyone to down tools. Depending on the workload within the collieries, 20 minutes could be taken at an agreed time. With no fancy tea rooms, the miners literally ate where they were working. The cramped working conditions that the miners had to work in for hours often had an effect on their stomachs, with crouching down causing heartburn if the stomach was full. There was a bit of an unwritten rule with miners, never eating anything fried below or just before going down. What did miners take their baits in? The precious cargo of bait was kept in a snack tin, a specially shaped waterproof tin that would mean miners could take food underground without it going a bit weird. Miners would take the snap tin with them containing their food for the shift, with the tin container often being manufactured by Acme. The tin would snap shut, keeping all of the coal dust and dirt out of the food, as well as saving it from the rats. Inside the tin would be a lining of brown paper, or with the contents being wrapped in the brown waxy paper saved from a loaf of bread, keeping everything fresh and protected underground. The tin would then be placed in a haversack bag, looking very much like the canvas gas mask bags from World War II, but with shoulder straps. What did miners take for their bait underground? Thick doorstop slices of bread slathered in jam were a firm favourite for pit men, staying fresh underground in the hot working environment. Dirty fingers transferred coal dust and oil into the bread crusts, so they were discarded and of course a little one was made for the pit pony too. It's thought that jam sandwiches were so popular due to keeping the mouth moist, being something easy to eat due in the stifling heat underground. Many also say that jam was the only thing they could taste as a result of the coal dust, being a refreshing treat to enjoy halfway through their shift. My own great grandar worked as a hewer at Weymouth Colliery in Sunderland, and had jam sandwiches every day and was never sick of them. Nicknamed Miner's Ham, the jam within the sandwiches taken for bait was often homemade. Early shop bought jams from the co-ops and grocers of the time was expensive, with the likes of Hartley's manufacturing their produce in earthenware pots. Mining communities would pick fruit seasonally from nearby hedgerows in their villages creating sugary preserves that would provide miners and other workers of the industrial age with sustenance to help them through 18 hour days. Preserves were incredibly good for unpredictable environments, being a better choice over cheese or meat which would go bad in high temperatures and taste funny underground. Rats preferred meat and tended to leave jam alone so definitely one to go for if you didn't want a rodent nibbling on your bait. Now we've got the jam, we need the bread too. Bread was constantly being made in working class communities, with the bowl of proven dough being a common sight in most kitchens. White bread was easy and relatively cheap to make by working class families at home and helped to save from the dangers of plaster of Paris, chalk and alum, which was used to bulk out baker's bread and make it white and more desirable. An interesting tale from Weymouth Colliery in Sunderland states that freshwater shrimps were living in the pit. The miners would often feed them their crusts. There was no leisurely cups of tea on the coal face, with drinks being transported in metal canteens called a Dudley. A good brew was important to feed the soul given the much needed caffeine to power through endless hours of shoveling coal. Later miners were able to afford thermos flasks to carry their strong tea in, but they were easily broken in industrial environments like the collieries, so often had to be replaced. I suppose the depths of the coal face can affect taste buds and give miners a fancy for unusual combinations of food. Through my research for this video, the same answers have been coming up time and time again for miners' favourite baits underground, and I've been fascinated to try them. 
so let's give this a go. Jam and cheese came up as the most popular after the iconic jam doorstop sandwich and seems to be known as the minus piece in Northern England and Scotland. The unusual mixture of sweet and savoury does make me think of this as the working class equivalent to the cheese and chutney refined taste seen in Downton Abbey. Many accounts refer to cheese sandwiches being more like a drink when taken underground, so jam was applied liberally to try and stop that from happening. In Yorkshire, Pittman would top cold Yorkshire puddings with cheese and jam, and I don't know whether to be impressed or absolutely horrified. Let's try the jam cheese sandwich. I think this is going to be the worst one yet. Oh, it smells funny. Mm. That's foul. That is absolutely foul. Oh my goodness. I'm to try one more, just to make sure. No. I suppose it might taste different underground, but I don't know what I want for me. No, no, no. I find it so interesting that something like this would be so liked by miners. I don't know if it's the cheese being too strong that I put in, that I put the cheddar in, um, or the, the jam being really sweet as a modern jam. I don't know, but oh, I don't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Apple and cheese sandwiches were another way of using local produce to create filling and cheap base ideas, with apples being grown in nearby orchards and sold at the local greengrocer. Akin to the famous ploughman's lunch, this sandwich would have been quite refreshing underground, although it's interesting to know if the apple would have actually protected the cheese from the blistering temperatures. Known as the depression sandwich, sugar sandwiches were a cheap way of creating a meal full of fuel for those that had little time to eat. The trick was to keep the sugar from sifting through the two slices of bread when you were eating it, and I think this would have turned out better if I'd put butter on it too. Sugar sandwich An alternative to sugar sandwiches was treacle, a thick dark syrup made from sugar cane. I'm definitely not looking forward to this one. It is actually a bit like a bonfire toffee spread on bread. <laughs> The last coal miner bait I decided to try was cheese and a tea cake. This sounded similar to the Christmas cake sandwiches that I heard were a festive favourite in the run up to New Year's Day. Christmas food leftovers would have been taken as bait to avoid waste. A working class Christmas cake would have looked a little different from today's, with the cake being a spiced fruit cake with no icing. A few mentioned having cheese with their Christmas cake sandwiches being a Yorkshire traditional combination stretching back to the Victorian era. Did you know that Wensleydale is thought to be the first to be paired with Christmas cake? Tea cake with cheese in.
seems to have been a very popular minus bait. So let's try it. That's actually not too bad, actually. Definitely not as bad as the jam, the jam and cheese. Never again, jam and cheese. This actually reminds me of the Yorkshire custom where you eat cheese with Christmas cake. I have heard as well that miners did take Christmas cake sandwiches down the mine just after Christmas as well. So that might be something that I try later on in the year. But actually, yeah, for my tiny little nibble, it was actually okay. A popular choice down the mines in Northern England and Yorkshire was Pobs. Bits of bread were soaked in hot milk, with lots of sugar sprinkled on the top. Originally used as a comfort food for children due an illness, it was quickly adopted as a cheap and easy food to consume in the collieries. Pobs have been eaten since medieval times, with the poorest bread, peas bread, going off very quickly as it was made from a mixture of pea and bean flour. The only way to eat it was to soak it in hot milk or ale been a favourite right up until the mid-1970s. It's amazing to think that all of these weird and wonderful bait ideas kept the miners full of fuel, ready to shovel coal for 12 hours a day. In an average day, a miner would have needed over 4,800 calories to contend with his very active job underground. That is nearly double the number of calories a man would need today. According to the National Coal Miner Museum, he would have burned 2,600 calories a day by shoveling coal onto a conveyor belt for five and a half hours. As well as over 700 calories being burnt, carrying his kit an hour to the coal face. Their gear could weigh up to one stone. It seems that the snap tin was truly a lifeline, not just a yummy meal to scram underground. Through the graft and grit of the collieries, with machinery and muscular men wheeled in shovels. It was the humble jam sandwich that powered it all. I really hope you liked this first instalment of Working Class Beat. Please let me know what you'd like to see next from me and please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more.